Hello there, fellow lab rats. Okay, uh, let's do that again. Hello there, fellow Mobius enjoyers. Today, we gathered to talk about one of the most interesting Konnichiwa. and deadly flame chasers. Mobius is a character that instantly stands out among the others due to her mysterious nature, personality and most importantly, her view on immortality and the concept of humanity. She is presented as the main villain for the first two chapters of the Elysian Realm, everybody painting her as someone that is best to be avoided. As we progress through the content and learn more about Mobius' past, her story shapes up to be a very tragic one driven by an obsession for evolution in a world doomed to be destroyed and surrounded by people who never truly understood her. These are 7 interesting facts about Mobius. Enjoy! An interesting thing to note is the name that Mihoyo chose for her. She is named after the Mobius Strip, which is a basic prototype for non-orientable surfaces proposed by the German mathematicians Johann Benedict Listing and August Ferdinand Mobius in 1885. The Mobius Strip, also called a twisted cylinder, is a one-sided surface that looks like an infinite loop, a symbol often associated with Mobius that reflects her obsession with infinity. Even if the Mobius Strip in itself is finite, what's interesting about it are the topological properties that it presents. Unlike any orientable surface, where if you walk a full circle, you will be back at the same point, if you do the same on a Mobius strip, you'll end up pointing in the opposite direction, even though you return in the same point in the 3D space. It is used to illustrate the idea of how things in lower dimensions might exist in higher dimensions. Interestingly enough, Klein is named after the Klein bottle, which functions under a similar mechanic, but it can only exist in a four-dimensional space. There is no secret in the fact that Mobius' obsession with evolution led her to perform many inhumane experiments that raised the opposition of a lot of people. But because she was so obsessed and hell-bent on transcending the limits of humanity, her genius gave birth to the very early prototypes of many of the current technologies and weapons used for fighting the Honkai. One example of such advancements made possible by her genius are the genetically modified codes known as Stigmata. Yes, the main weapon used by the Valkyries today to fight the Honkai are a byproduct of the research carried by Mobius and Dr. May on the Hershers of the previous era. Later, when the previous era was destroyed, Dr. May put the Stigmata genes in every human embryo that were used to restore humanity, giving every human in the current era the Stigmata genes and making Project Stigma possible. Another important technology that she helped develop is the metamorph surgery, which gave birth to Mantis soldiers. This technology entails giving human strength through modified Honkai genes called metamorph ichors. Mobius helped develop the technology, which was later perfected by Dr. May and used for the first time on Kevin to transform him into a super soldier to fight the seventh Hersher. Mobius' serial code is CM003. That means that she is the third one to become a Mantis after Kevin and Alicia. 
The Honkai beast she fused with was called Sesha and it was a serpent-like judgment class Honkai beast that was born during the third Honkai eruption in the previous era and had lightning powers as well as the ability to revive itself after it dies. In my previous video about Elysia, I said that there were no judgment class Honkai beasts in the previous era, but it turns out that I was wrong. Sesha is confirmed to be a judgment class in one of Mobius's files, the only judgment class in the previous era that we know about at this time. Unfortunately, while making the video for Elysia, I did not read the record files added in 5.1 for Mobius. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. Her snake-like features and her immortality are all a result of combining with the Honkai genes of this beast. Every time Mobius is killed, she will revive in a certain amount of time, but her body will regress, becoming younger every time she revives. This is why we see Mobius appearing before us in the body of a child, even if in some flashbacks and promotional materials she appears to have the body of an adult. Please note that there is a limit on how much she can revive, her body will keep regressing until she will eventually enter an embryo state and eventually will cease to exist. Also, it was confirmed that she is still able to age, so if she doesn't die for a long period of time, Mobius will eventually grow back to have the body of an adult. During an academic seminar that was held in Mu, Mobius approached Dr. May after a presentation because her ideas and methodology caught her attention. She saw in Dr. May the potential of a like-minded individual, someone that would go to any lengths necessary to realize their goals. Nonetheless, her interest and conversation with Dr. May that she had that day led to Dr. May being part of the Fire Moth in the future, changing the destiny of humanity forever. In the end, even if the two had many similarities in their resolve and length that they would go for realizing their ambitions, Dr. May states clearly that Mobius's ideology is far too extreme and that what she is trying to achieve cannot be called humanity anymore. A fun thing to note is that during chapter 17, when we had the flashback between Kevin and Dr. May, she talks about attending an academic seminar in Mu, which is most likely the place where she's approached by Mobius. I just wanted to point that out since it's very nice to see that all the things come together eventually. We later found out that her playful and seductive attitude towards May comes because she's trying to imitate Elysia's personality. Mobius noticed that kind of behavior to be more likely to get other people to comply with her wishes and get her what she wants. She says that even if she hates every moment of using that persona, she doesn't mind it as long as it helps her in her research. And because she tries so hard to be like Elysia, her attitude towards May has the opposite effect and makes her even more suspicious. During the Mobius' lab animated skit, we got to see a glimpse at the relationship between her and Klein. For Mobius, Klein was the only person that understood and accepted her, and that is why Klein's death affected her very much, maybe even more than she realized. But what if I told you that the actual truth behind Klein's death is much more darker and f up than you would imagine? During the attack of the previous era, Hersher of Dominance, Klein was one of the many people that were possessed by it and ended up killing Mobius. When Sue came over, he found Mobius already dead and used his psychic abilities to restrain the possessed assistant. Meanwhile, Mobius started to revive, but to complete the process she needed a large amount of Honkai energy and instinctively attacked and killed Klein, who was near her at that time and could provide the amount of Honkai energy that she needed. Then she underwent an active Honkai reaction, which is an ability that every mantis possess that lets them transform into the Honkai beast they fuse with, but the price is that they will lose their humanity in the process. 
eventually she was stopped, but she did not remember anything about what really happened. She was told that Sue was the one who killed Klein, but she never believed that for a second and thought that everybody tried to hide the truth from her because that would make her lose control and enact revenge like Alpas did with the loss of Emil. So to this day, Mobius lives in ignorance not knowing that she was the one that killed the most important and most precious person in her life. Oh boy, talk about messed up. That's messed up, that's messed up, that's messed up, that's messed up. Throughout playing the second chapter of the Elysian Realm and learn more about Mobius, several questions and pieces of information that don't quite add up appear in May's head. The Mobius sim keeps calling herself the real Mobius. This raises some suspicions because from what everybody in the Elysian Realm told her, the real Mobius should be alive in the current era, but nobody on the outside ever saw her or interacted with her. This leads May to believe that maybe the real Mobius transferred her consciousness in the sim from the Elysian Realm and that she's truly the real deal, but that we learn to be false as we progress. After May learns from Raven and the other flame chasers the truth behind the active Honkai reaction, she decides to confront Mobius without realizing that she has fallen right into her trap. Mobius' true intentions all this time were to transfer her consciousness into May's body and leave the Elysian realm. The two of them fight, and after Mobius is defeated, we learn through a message that the real Mobius left with Klein that she killed herself right before entering the cryopods and coming into the new era. In this message, she states that Elysia's death had a very big impact on her and made her realize that the immortality she pursued had no real meaning and all this time she was just running away because she was afraid to die. And that's when everything gets really crazy because we learned that everything that just happened was planned by the sim Mobius. After Elysia died and the real Mobius came to sing with the Elysian realm for the last time, the sim Mobius planted a seed of doubt in her mind to break her. What this means is that basically the sim Mobius gave the real Mobius depression until she killed herself for good. Yeah, I know, it's f***ed up. She did this because, from her perspective, there was no need for two Mobiuses to exist. She was hoping for this result, so when Klein showed her the message from the real Mobius, she was happy because this basically confirmed that her plan succeeded and the real Mobius ended her life. But even with all of these events taking place, there are still many questions left unexplained. In her last file, we learned that after she recorded the message for the sim, the real Mobius went to meet with Prometheus and it was never stated that she actually died. That made many people think that maybe the real Mobius had other plans. There are still many suspicious things left unexplained in the story of Mobius. But nonetheless, these are all speculations and theories that are yet to be confirmed. In the end, who is this mad scientist that is so obsessed with immortality in evolution? Is she just a crazy soul that let her obsessions take away her humanity and was hell-bent into going against any morals in order to satisfy her curiosity? Or was she just a misunderstood person that only wanted to help humanity achieve the victory against the Honkai despite what everyone said and thought about her? Was she just a ruthless monster or a human being that deep down only wanted to be understood and appreciated by others? Or maybe she was both. But this contradiction in itself is what makes Mobius one of the most tragic and interesting characters among the 13 flame chasers. 
一份曾经的存在，催生出了新的生命，而他又将以这份存在为基石，在这个世界上继续前行。这或许，就是人类称之为进化的旅途。这又未尝不是一种答案呢，克莱因。再见了，我的理解者。Hey, I just want to take a quick moment to thank everyone that watched my videos and supported me in the last few weeks. This channel grew more than I could ever imagine, and I want to let you guys know that I am extremely grateful and will work hard to improve and bring you more quality content. Thank you very much, and see you all next time.